In September of 2013, Morgan Huxley's housemate found him lying in a pool of blood in the doorway of the home they shared in Neutral Bay on the North Shore of Sydney, Australia. 31-year-old Huxley died after he'd been stabbed at least 20 times, and investigators determined he'd also been indecently assaulted. The police found that the businessman had had disputes at work and that he was dating several women at the time, but they gradually excluded anyone who might have wanted him harmed. Surveillance footage showed Huxley intoxicated and barefooted as he was leaving the Oaks Hotel in the early hours of September the 8th. A young man, later identified as Daniel Jack Kelsall, appeared to be following Huxley and broke into a jog behind him. 22-year-old Kelsall, who worked as a kitchen hand in the area, was interviewed on September the 24th and he denied having been to the victim's apartment. A few days later, he asked officers to meet him at a car park and stated he'd had intimate relations with Huxley, whom he claimed was alive when he left. The conversation would be deemed inadmissible, but nevertheless, Kelsall was arrested on murder charges on October the 4th, after the case against him had grown increasingly stronger. His DNA was found on the victim's body. He'd left fingerprints at the scene and a shoulder bag. He was seen carrying in CCTV footage had spots of Huxley's blood on it that appeared to have been amateurishly cleaned. Furthermore, about 16 months prior to the murder, Kelsall had told a psychiatrist he was having violent, intrusive thoughts about stabbing someone on the way home from work for the thrill of it. The accused killer told the court that he and Huxley had been intimate and he'd fled the apartment after an intruder had burst inside. The baby-faced psychopath, as the media dubbed him, appeared emotionless throughout his trial. It took a jury less than three hours to convict him of murder, for which he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Number 6. Aisha Stewart In 2003, Oklahoma man Patrick Walker was convicted of first-degree murder in the shooting of 19-year-old Brandon Harlan in Oklahoma City. He claimed to have acted in self-defense but was given a life sentence. In April of 2018, Walker was booked into Payne County Jail as he waited to appear in court for assaulting a corrections officer. Three of Walker's girlfriends, who reportedly also sold drugs for him, worked together to help him escape custody. They were named as Naomi Dobbs, Megan Hughes, and the baby-faced Aisha Stewart, aged 21. On November the 29th of 2018, Walker stole the ID of a cellmate with whom he bore a resemblance and threatened to kill his family if he spoke about it. Hughes and Dobbs bonded him out of prison and he went on the run with Stewart. Communication between the four conspirators indicated that he didn't initially want her to come along, but Stewart, whom Walker once described as gangster enough to his other girlfriends, eventually met up with him in Grand Prairie, Texas. Stewart was fleeing an armed robbery case at the time. In 2015, she and a female accomplice were accused of holding up and non-fatally shooting two men in separate incidents in Oklahoma City. Stewart was also believed to have been connected to the 2017 shooting death of Joseph Larty, whose body was never found. The 27-year-old and Stewart had been seen together getting food at Joe's Crab Shack in Oklahoma City, hours before he went missing and nine shell casings were found by his truck. While held at the Oklahoma County Jail on the robbery charge, Stewart reportedly revealed her gang connections by throwing up the signs for the 107 Hoover Crips to other inmates. While her trial was pending and after Walker had escaped, they fled together to St. Louis. Speaking on the relationship between Walker and Stewart, who was 14 years younger than him, one investigator would report he liked her because she was as ruthless as he was. The couple had allegedly told their friends that they intended to shoot it out with the police when they came for them. However, US deputy marshals took the couple by surprise at a St. Louis motel and arrested them without incident on December the 4th. Time was added to Walker's sentence and Stewart faced felony charges in connection to his escape, but they were eventually dropped. She was eventually given five years and six months for the armed robbery. In the summer of 2022, Stewart, Walker, and a man by the name of Jonathan Bledsoe were officially charged with Latte's murder after the case had gone cold in 2020. Number 5. Miles Smith Green English teenager Miles Smith Green burglarized two homes in Worcestershire in the early hours of June the 14th of 2020. The baby-faced teen, who was reportedly intoxicated on drugs and alcohol, first raided a residence in Thatcher's Close, Droughtwich. He and an accomplice made off with an Xbox gaming console 
while the owners were in bed, a neighbor reportedly spotted the duo who wore face coverings as they jumped over the fence on their way out. Green and his partner then targeted a home in Plowman's Way, not far from the first crime scene. The female occupants, one of whom was pregnant, slept through the robbery even as Green pilfered items from a bedroom. A woman found that her cell phone had been taken from her bed where she'd left it to charge. Her bank card and passport had been stolen from her bedside drawer and she later saw that some of her possessions had been scattered outside, as later reported by the authorities. The victim was emotionally affected by the fact that someone had been in her room while she slept. Green was arrested at 2 a.m. with law enforcement finding an Xbox controller, an identity card belonging to one of the victims, and a five-inch kitchen knife on him. His accomplice was apprehended later in the day and a video on his phone showed him and Green wearing face masks. When he appeared at Worcester Crown Court, Green, who didn't have a criminal record, pleaded guilty to two counts of burglary and one of possessing a blade. Number 4. Nathan Smith Baby-faced drug dealer Nathan Smith was arrested in Hull, England in 2021 by undercover police officers. The 27-year-old was caught in the act of passing illicit substances to a group of men before entering an apartment building. When he came out, law enforcement took him into custody at which point he reportedly told one of the officers, come on mate, I am just paying my way. Smith's North Hull home was searched and the police recovered drugs which included six wraps of heroin and eight of cocaine, phones and digital scales. The cash found in his home amounting to over $50 was later donated to a charity. A judge at Hull Crown Court told him that he was actively helping spread misery by peddling drugs in his community. Smith admitted possessing heroin and cocaine with intent to supply on April the 6th of 2021. He was jailed for 18 months and pledged to change his lifestyle, which had previously funded his drug addiction. Number 3. Mukad Ali Farah On May the 15th of 2017, teenager Mukad Ali Farah was involved in an argument with 22-year-old Abdirahman Adam in Leicester, England. The police would later describe the initial dispute as seemingly insignificant, but it culminated with Farah plunging a kitchen knife into Adam's chest. The wound proved fatal. Hours before the incident, the teenager had sent out angry WhatsApp messages, claiming that he wanted to stab someone the following day. Farrar was arrested and during his trial at Leicester Crown Court, he admitted to stabbing Adam but denied murder. He maintained that he had acted in self-defense while under the belief that the victim was carrying a knife which he was intending to use against him. In spite of his statements, there was no indication that Adam had ever acted in a threatening manner towards Farrar. In fact, the victim had previously sent him messages warning him about his new friends. Farrar had recently started associating with criminals and was part of a group that had snatched a woman's handbag. He was on a youth offending scheme at the time of the killing. After the stabbing, he went to see his youth offending worker who described him as being cool as a cucumber. Prosecutors told the court that the baby-faced Farrar was remorseless and the jury found him unanimously guilty in the fall of 2017. He was sentenced to a minimum of 14 years behind bars. Number 2. Corey Smits Wisconsin police took notice of a vehicle driving erratically in Two Rivers in the summer of 2011. Officers conducted a traffic stop and approached the driver, 29-year-old Corey Smits. He had bloodshot eyes, smelled of alcohol, and had trouble standing upright. He was uncooperative and belligerent. When officers arrested him on suspicion of drunk driving, they later had to deploy their pepper spray cans on Smits after he'd started pounding his head on the divider in the back of the patrol car. Smits's mugshot earned attention online due to his unusual appearance, which some users described as being that of a tattooed baby. Aside from soft features and thin hair, he had face tattoos consisting of dark dots over his eyebrows and a second set of eyebrow-shaped black lines above them. He also had the phrase, love kills slow, tattooed above a skull and crossbones design on his neck. Smits was known to law enforcement having previously been arrested for DUI four times from 2004 to 2008. Before we move on to the last listing and in case you're just getting settled in for a binge session, we have When Face Tattoos Go Wrong lined up for you right after this. 
Number one, Ali Kaya. Turkish serial killer Ali Kaya claimed his first victim at the age of 19, shortly after he'd been released from prison for theft and assault in 1997. Kaya fatally stabbed his uncle following a dispute while he was working at his real estate office in Alanya. He was given a five-year sentence. After he was paroled in 1999, Kaya killed a man whom he believed had assaulted his mother and was imprisoned once more in Eastern Anatolia. He was diagnosed with an unspecified mental disorder during his incarceration and transferred to a psychiatric hospital, from which he was eventually released following reports that he was claustrophobic. Kaya went on to stab five people in Alanya, only one of whom survived. Two of the victims, Kamal Aksakal and Hassan Askarolu, who were wardens at Alanya prison, were knifed in the street by Kaya. After being diagnosed with a personality disorder, he was taken to a psychiatric hospital in Manisa, which housed a number of dangerous criminals. One of the patients was serial killer Ihan Kartal, nicknamed the Beast of Izmir, who ended up on the same 17 people ward as 23-year-old Kaya. The latter, and an accomplice, fatally stabbed Kartal in the throat and stomach on March the 13th of 2000. Following his latest high-profile murder, Kaya became known as the Babyface Killer. He was arrested and sent to the semi-open San Luafa prison in 2003. He escaped, but was recaptured the following year after law enforcement in the village of Mamutla conducted a traffic stop on a suspicious vehicle. Kaya was using a fake ID and had a death list on him, which included the names of known businessmen. During interrogation, the serial killer claimed that he wanted to cleanse the society of bad people. By then, he'd killed Mehmet Poiraz, a man living in his parental home in Gaziantep. Kaya escaped for a second time in early January of 2014, but was recaptured in March, when the authorities found him with a handgun and another death list. Number 8. Malaira Perez In December of 2016, a woman from Boynton Beach, Florida, was arrested after shooting a man near Greenacres and engaging the police in a high-speed chase in West Palm Beach. 23-year-old Malaira Perez had approached the porch where 28-year-old Armando Lopez and a relative were sitting. She held them at gunpoint, robbed them, and then fatally shot Lopez. A week before the shooting, he'd reportedly been kidnapped and beaten, an incident believed to have been a form of retaliation for him selling guns in the area. After the shooting, Perez then fled the scene. The woman, whose facial tattoos included an eye in the middle of the forehead and the word fame above her brow, was found on December the 7th. She drove off in a Nissan Altima, ignoring officers' commands and leading them on a chase in which speeds of up to 100 miles per hour were recorded. She then parked on Pine Abbey Drive S and placed her backpack under the seat before she got out and tried to hide. The police took her in without incident and found weapons, including a gun used to shoot Lopez, as well as a large amount of drugs in her possession. Aside from the murder weapon, detectives discovered traces of the victim's blood in the rental car that Perez had been driving. Surveillance footage and cell phone location data also placed her at the scene, in addition to the eyewitness reports. In 2020, Perez was sentenced to 40 years after pleading guilty to second-degree murder. Number 7. Anthony Ward In 2018, Ohio law enforcement was looking for 45-year-old Anthony Ward, known as Popeye, in connection with a series of break-ins that had occurred in the Adams and Brown counties. The police decided to post his picture on Facebook and, because of his distinctive face tattoos, Ward was apprehended within eight hours. Ward's artwork partially covered his skull, but the feature that made him instantly recognizable was a tattoo reminiscent of Hannibal Lecter's face mask from the Silence of the Lambs movie. It covered half his face, starting from above the tip of the nose and stretching from ear to ear. Ward was held at the Clement County Jail on charges that included breaking and entering, theft, and receiving stolen property. It wasn't Ward's first run-in with the law. A year prior, he'd been accused of trying to entice an underage girl to get into his truck in Springsboro. In court, the girl stated she was afraid she'd never see her family again and promptly slammed the door in his face. Ward and his lawyers defended the accusation by claiming that he'd only been looking to make a living by plowing people's driveways in the area. 
His lawyers added that people always assumed the worst of him because of his terrifying tattoos, which he'd gotten in prison and was saving money to have removed. The jury deliberated for half an hour and Ward was acquitted. Number 6. Dion Hulse In October of 2011, authorities in Walsall, England, spotted a group of men trying to tie down pieces of metal to a Ford Transit. After his accomplices had fled, 29-year-old Dion Hulse, whose entire face was emblazoned by a skull tattoo, was left standing by the vehicle. The police realized that the frames were actually market stalls, stolen from Brown Hills Market, to be sold as scrap metal. There were seven of them, each worth the equivalent of nearly $700. Hulse, who called himself Mad Dog, made a full confession and admitted to helping the men load the stalls into the vehicle, adding that he'd planned to use the money to cover a cannabis debt. In July of the previous year, the police had seized the drugs from him during a raid. According to his defense, Hulse had been holding the cannabis for a friend while he was on holiday. It was that same friend who'd allegedly pressured him into helping steal the frames so that he could restore his stash. Hulse was ultimately spared jail time for both the theft and the previous drug possession, receiving instead a suspended sentence of 12 months. Hulse had achieved some notoriety after an appearance on The Jeremy Kyle Show. He had been volunteered for the show by his then-girlfriend for a segment called How Could My Boyfriend Destroy His Own Face? After failing a lie detector test in which he was asked if he'd slept with other women, the host told him, you are a liar and a cheat and you look ridiculous. Number 5. Robert Michael After an attempted car theft, police in Jackson County, Missouri were able to quickly track down Robert Michael on account of his extensive face and neck tattoos. In addition to black tribal streaks that ran over his eyes, Michael also had an automatic rifle on his neck. He'd entered a church in Oak Grove and asked the pastor for a lift to the nearby city of Independence. While reluctant at first, the clergyman eventually accepted after Michael had told him that he had family problems. While the car was parked outside of a home, he twice tried to grab the keys out of the ignition. On the second failed attempt, the pastor assumed control of the vehicle, hoping he'd be able to drive away. It was at that moment that Michael brandished a knife and demanded his wallet. The pastor abandoned his truck and ran away. He flagged down a passing motorist who alerted the police and subsequently gave the authorities a description of his attacker. He was arrested a short time later and charged with first-degree attempted robbery. Number 4. Donald Murray In late 2019, Donald Murray led Indiana police on a high-speed chase after they attempted to pull him over for driving without any lights on his vehicle. The pursuit ended with 38-year-old Murray crashing his car into a tree and then fleeing on foot. He didn't avoid the police for long as he was easily identifiable by his array of face tattoos, one of which was the word playboy on the side of his face and, quite ironically, crime pays on his forehead. The incident was featured on an episode of Live PD and Murray was arrested shortly afterwards. Only a few months later, Murray was back in jail again for engaging the Terre Haute Police Department on a short chase. From his latest criminal offense, Murray faced charges of auto theft, reckless driving, methamphetamine possession, and resisting law enforcement. Number 3. Matthew Joseph Medley In 2020, an Oregon man with extensive face tattoos was arrested by the police as he was trying to rob a snack shack at a railway station. 36-year-old Matthew Joseph Medlin fled the scene and tried to hide in a nearby supermarket. He was confronted by the pursuing officers because the storage room he'd sought refuge in only had one exit. Medlin reached under his jacket and threatened to shoot the officers but was tasered in response. It was subsequently revealed that he had no gun on him. The police discovered that Medlin had been in and out of jail for nearly two decades. During this time, his mugshots showed a progression of his face ink which gradually came to include menacing pointed eyebrows and four tears on his cheeks. His criminal record featured among others a conviction on burglary and assault charges in 2013 and escaping from jail only a few days prior to his release in May of 2014. Today's topic was inspired by Instagram followers, Random Randy Artist, McHugh Anthony and Official BP. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below or follow us on Instagram and reach out to us there. Number 2. Patrick Revins 
In 2014, a man pulled a bread knife at a bank in Hanley, England, after a clerk had asked him to leave because he was too drunk to use his cash card. It only took the police 20 minutes to locate and arrest Patrick Revins, who had his initials tattooed on his face, as well as the word Annette in the center of his forehead. The 49-year-old admitted to brandishing the 8-inch blade, claiming he'd flown into a rage because he was unable to operate the cash machine. He was subsequently jailed for 27 months on three charges of possessing a bladed weapon. Number 1. Morgan Joyce Vaughn On April the 24th of 2017, South Carolina resident Morgan Joyce Vaughn and an accomplice engaged a SWAT team in a standoff following a kidnapping and robbery at her Lancaster County home. Vaughn and Jonathan Robinson, both in their 20s, were present at the residence along with several other people. An unnamed man whom Vaughn had invited over was held by Robinson at gunpoint. The woman demanded his money and cell phone, threatening him with an ashtray. Before the pair let him go, Vaughn reportedly smashed his cell phone. The man went to one of the neighbors who phoned the police. Three deputies arrived and demanded the occupants leave the house. Several complied, but Vaughn, Robinson, and a second unidentified woman refused to do so. A SWAT team and a crisis negotiator were called to the scene. They attempted unsuccessfully to talk them out of the home for several hours. The SWAT team then went in and managed to bring them into custody without the exchange of gunfire. They found a handgun and ammunition inside as well as a considerable sum of money on Robinson's person. Both were arrested on kidnapping and armed robbery charges, among others. Vaughn's mugshot subsequently became viral online and was described by some commenters as demonic or nightmare fuel. She had tattoos on her face and neck, dark lipstick, and the whites of her eyes were completely blackened. A TV station referred to her mugshot as something that would haunt viewers' dreams. A few years earlier, in 2015, Vaughn had made local news thanking York County police officers for helping deliver her daughter when she was unable to reach the hospital in time. Her eyes and much of her face wasn't tattooed at the time. Thanks for watching. Would you rather go back in your toddler body and have the same mind you have now or go through puberty again? Let us know in the comments section below.